Hello and welcome to 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarb al -Fatih. Based on the insistence of the state of Qatar to continue to undermine the security and stability of the Kingdom of Bahrain and to interfere in its domestic affairs as well as on the escalation and incitement of its media and its support to acts of terror and to financing armed groups associated with Iran to carry out a supervised attack and spread chaos in the Kingdom in flagrant violation of all agreements, covenants and principles of international law without any regard to values, law, morals or consideration of the principles of good neighborliness or pledge to the premises of Gulf relations and the denial of previous commitments, the Kingdom of Bahrain announced the severing of its diplomatic relations with the state of Qatar in order to preserve its national security. Bahrain is also withdrawing its diplomatic mission from Doha and giving all members of the Qatari diplomatic mission 48 hours to leave the kingdom and the completion of the necessary procedures. Bahrain is also closing its airspace, ports and territorial waters to air traffic and shipping to and from Qatar within 24 hours of the announcement of the statement. The government of the Kingdom of Bahrain is banning its citizens from traveling to Qatar or staying there. It regrets that Qatari citizens are not allowed to enter or transiting through Bahrain. Qatari residents and visitors are therefore given 14 days to leave the kingdom in order to avoid any hostile attempts or activities that may exploit the situation, despite pride and confidence in the brethren among the Qatari people and their love for their second country. The dangerous Qatari practices have not been confined to the Kingdom of Bahrain but have also been extended to brotherly countries that have been informed that such acts reflect a very dangerous pattern which cannot be ignored or accepted and must be addressed with full strength and firmness. While the Kingdom of Bahrain regrets this decision taken to protect its security and maintain its stability, it affirms its keenness on the brotherly people of Qatar who are aware of its suffering as they witnessed with each act of terror the fall of casualties among their brothers and sisters in Bahrain because their government continues to support terrorism at all levels and to attempt to bring down the legitimate regime in Bahrain. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Egypt, Libya and the Maldives severed their ties with Qatar, accusing it of supporting terrorism. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia cut its diplomatic ties with Qatar, emanating from exercising its sovereign rights guaranteed by the international law and protecting its national security from the dangers of terrorism and extremism. The Saudi press agency SPA reported today that the government of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has decided to to sever diplomatic and consular relations with the state of Qatar, close all land, sea and airports, pre prevent crossing into Saudi territories, airspace and territorial waters and start immediate legal procedures for understanding with fraternal and friendly countries and international companies to implement the same procedure as soon as possible for all means of transport to and from the state of Qatar for reasons relating to Saudi national security according to an official source. The United Arab Emirates also severed its ties with Qatar and has given Qatar's diplomatic mission in Abu Dhabi 48 hours to leave the country after what it said were Doha's several policies which destabilizes the security and stability of the region and manipulates commitments. The UAE informed Qatari citizens that they had 14 days to leave the UAE. Citizens from Qatar have also been banned from passing through the UAE. Emirates are now banned from visiting or even passing by Qatar at all means. The UAE affirmed its complete commitment and support to the Gulf Cooperation Council and to the security and stability of the GCC states. The UAE is taking these decisions, decisive measures, as a result of the Qatari authorities' failure to abide by the Riyadh Agreement on returning GCC diplomats to Doha and its complementary arrangements in 2014. And Qatar's continued support, funding and hosting 
forming a terror groups, a primarily Islamic Brotherhood, and its sustained endeavors to promote the ideologies of Daesh and Al-Qaeda across its direct and indirect media, in addition to Qatar's violation of the statement issued at the U.S. Islamic Summit in Riyadh on May 21, 2017, on countering terrorism in the region and considering Iran a state sponsor of terrorism. The UAE measures are taken as well based on Qatari authorities hosting of terrorist elements and meddling in the affairs of other countries as well as their support of terror groups policies which are likely to push the region into a stage of unpredictable consequences. While regretting the policies taken by the state of Qatar that now seeds that sow seeds of sedition and discord among its region countries, the UAE affirms its full respect and appreciation for the brotherly Qatari people on account of the profound historical, religious, and fraternal ties and uh, kind relations binding UAE and Qatari people. And on the issue, we are now joined from Rome, Italy, by President of the Eurogolf Information Center, Dr. Mitchell Belfer. Hello, Dr. Belfer. Hope you're okay. Hello. Thank you. It's very Hi. nice to be here today. Thank you. It's nice to have you here with us today. Um, doctor, what is your comment about the decision that has been taken by various Gulf and Arab countries in regards to cutting ties with Qatar? Uh, well, if I could be maybe very brief about it, I think it's the right decision to make. Um, the list of charges that are uh, levied against Qatar at this time is just huge. And it's a very it's, it's not a, even a delicate issue to address. It's, a, it's an elephant in the room because um, some of these things from the support of terrorism, especially in regards to the Muslim Brotherhood, which is why Egypt gets involved in this, uh, but also to terrorist operations that have taken place in Bahrain, and also in the eastern provinces of Saudi Arabia, I and mean, these are very significant charges. Uh, and I think that you know, these, this is a long time in coming, and it's the right decision to take now. Qatar needs to see that the other GCC countries are going to stand in solidarity and not to allow this kind of violation to take place. Now, that said, I also very strongly believe that unity is super important. And so, the faster that the mm -hmm. kind of uh, Qataris can understand the consequences of their actions, the better it will be for everybody. Because in order to face real global and regional challenges, the GCC countries have to work together. And you can see already that the Iranians are very happy to see this, this unity in the GCC. They've already offered to compensate for the loss in revenue to Qatar uh, that the severing of relations is going to produce. They're looking over the Gulf and they're seeing this unity and they're going to try to expose that even more. So I think the best thing is to rapidly come up with a solution to this, but Qatar certainly needs to know uh, that its actions cannot be tolerated. Mm -hmm. Well, President of the Euro Gulf Information Center, Dr. Mitchell Belfer, thank you very much for joining us. His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired at Qadabiya Palace today the weekly cabinet meeting. The Prime Minister commended the humanitarian and noble goals of the Isa Award for service to humanity with the care of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, saying that the award has an international respect that reinforced Bahrain's role in spreading the culture of humanitarian work and shedded light on bright models in this regard. He said the award has immortalized the name of the late uh, ruler His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa, who will always be remembered for his effective contribution to serving humanity. In this regard, His Royal Highness congratulated the winner of the third session of the award 2015-2017, which is the Egyptian Children's Cancer Hospital Foundation. He also commended the efforts of the Board of Trustees of the award, chaired by Deputy Premier Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa and the members of the awards jury. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister then reviewed the results of his meeting with the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, which uh, they held during a broadly visit to the state of Kuwait recently. The cabinet commended the depth of Bahraini Kuwaiti historic relations and the importance of the visit in promoting joint cooperation and supporting the development of the Gulf Cooperation Council. In a relevant matter, the cabinet welcomed electing Kuwait as a non permanent member of the Security Council, which comes in line 
in with, with the re leading role of Kuwait led by His Highness the Emir and its international diplomacy, which qualified it for the post. The cabinet affirmed that the accomplishment will contribute in serving the issues of the region and reinforcing its security and stability. On a separate note, the cabinet said the decisions that have been taken by the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Arab Republic of Egypt, in addition to several brotherly countries to sever ties with Qatar, are inevitable decisions. The meeting said that the decisions reflect the unified stance of these countries to protect security and maintain stability and preserve sovereignty as well as to ward off any threats and protect the people. The cabinet directed all ministries and concerned government bodies to take necessary actions to implement the decisions related to severing ties with the state of Qatar. In regards to other issues on the meeting's agenda, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed the Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning and the Minister of Housing to visit the village of El Daraz and neighboring villages to inspect their services and facilities requirements by directly meeting with the citizens and listening to their needs. His Royal Highness directed to open vital traffic intersections in the capital following completion of development projects and directed the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Works, Municipalities affairs and urban planning to follow up on the matter. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister congratulated the students who passed the general certificate and wished them continued success. He commended the efforts of the education staff of teachers and administrators. The Minister of Education meanwhile said that the results have reflected the high success rates in the secondary stage. In regards to citizens' observations, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister urged to avoid any power of or water cuts and directed the Minister of Electricity and Water to to present a report on the power cuts cases in some areas, such as Hamatan, outlining the reasons that caused them and the steps that have been taken by the ministry to avoid them. His Royal Highness directed for a memorandum to be presented from the Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning regarding shrimp fishermen that includes options to keep their income during fishing ban without violating the government's efforts to preserve wildlife. The Cabinet commended the efforts of security forces in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and efficiency in foiling a terrorist attack represented in a booby-trapped car on the King Abdulaziz Road in Qatif. The meeting noted the efforts in combating terrorism and dealing with outlaws in addition to thwarting plans aiming to destabilizing Saudi Arabia. The meeting re re reiterated Bahrain's full solidarity with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in combating terrorism and its full support to all its measures aiming to preserve security and stability. The cabinet meeting also condemned the terrorist attacks that took place in the British capital London which targeted innocent people. The meeting confirmed Bahrain's support to the United Kingdom against terrorism and its expressed condolences to the families of the victims of the attack. The Cabinet approved the basis of the state budget estimated for the fiscal years 2017-2018 and fiscal policies as well as the estimates of general oil and non-oil revenues, expenditures and expected deficit. In this regard, the Cabinet entrusted the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs and the rationalization of spending to proceed with the preparation of the draft general budget law of the state in preparation for its transfer to the legislative authority. The Cabinet discussed a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs regarding the renewal of the agreement to establish the Arab Regional Center for World Heritage and decided to refer the memorandum of the, to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs and Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs and the Rationalization of Spending. The Cabinet approved a draft law aimed to amend the law of the proceedings before the Sharia Courts prepared in the light of the proposed law submitted by the Representatives Council. The amendment aims to reduce the duration of the cancellation of the case and dismissing it if it passed 60 days instead of the six months period in the current law so that the law of regal procedures is constant with the law of pleadings. 
The cabinet also approved based on the recommendation from the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs on two proposals submitted by the Representatives Council regarding the establishment of a pedestrian bridge near the Al Hadai Al Khalifiya School and the second regarding the establishment of a rainwater drainage department. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Spring Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa held an iftar banquet yesterday evening at the Bahrain Defence Force BDF Officers Club. His Royal Highness was received by the BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, Minister of State for Defence Affairs Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalahma, Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Daib Diab bin Saigar Al Naimi, and a number of senior BDF officers. The Crown Prince highlighted the BDF some many achievements under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and praised the BDF's firm commitment to safeguarding the kingdom's stability and safety. His Royal Highness also highlighted the BDF's role in intensifying collaboration with regional and international partners, which he said is vital to maintaining regional security. He extended his best wishes to BDF officers on the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan, remarking that Ramadan plays an important role in reinforcing the Islamic principles of peace and compassion. On behalf of the BDF, the Commander-in-Chief extended his best wishes to His Royal Highness on the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan and expressed his confidence that the people of Bahrain will continue to enjoy progress and prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited yesterday the Majlis of His Highness Sheikh Ibrahim bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Majlis of Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Dahrani and the Majlis of Abdullah bin Hamad Al Naimi. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa accompanied His Royal Highness during the visits. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted that the core purpose of the Kingdom's development progress is to further improve citizens' living standards and that His Majesty the King continues to stress the importance of placing the interests of Bahrain's citizens at the heart of all strategies and initiatives. The Crown Prince noted that the fiscal challenges faced by all oil exporting nations will be overcome in Bahrain through sustainable fiscal policies and initiatives which strengthen public and private sector collaboration and benefit all. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince spoke of the last year's government's forum which set out key tools that would help Bahrain deliver its development goals and further improve citizens' living standards. His Royal Highness emphasized that the main goals include strengthening efforts to, re to redefine the role of the public sector from the primary engine of economic growth into a private sector enabler and regulator, facilitating innovation and increasing competitiveness while continuing to invest in citizens. His Royal Highness also added that enhancing public services and legislative framework to strengthen Bahrain's and national competitiveness as well as the simplification of government procedures are among the most important tools needed to translate development goals into intangible results that directly benefit Bahrain citizens. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince stressed that he is confident in Bahrain's ability to deliver those targets should it continue to follow the guiding principles of economic vision of 2030, sustainability, competitiveness and fairness. His Royal Highness confirmed that as part of its commitment to maintaining a diversified sustainable national economy, the kingdom will continue to pursue policies aimed at enhancing the role of the private sector and increasing investment opportunities within an economic environment based on creativity and innovation. His Royal Highness emphasized that only through the combined efforts of both the public and private sectors will the kingdom be in a position to sustain a strong economy in the face of global economic challenges. The Majlis hosts and guests expressed their gratitude for the visit and highlighted His Royal Highness Crown Prince's commitment to advancing the kingdom's sustainable development and delivering opportunities for the people of Bahrain.
The commander of the Royal Guard Brigadier General, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received participants of the BDF Special Duty Force as part of Arab Coalition Forces Operation Restore Hope in Yemen. His Highness Sheikh Nasser welcomed the BDF Special Duty Force participants, expressing gratitude and appreciation of their loyal efforts in the performance of their national duty within the Arab Coalition Forces in support of the legitimacy in Yemen led by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Senior BDF officers and relatives of the BDF Special Duty Force participants also attended the reception. Deputy Prime Minister, the Board of Trustees Chairman of the ISA Award for Service to Humanity, Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, hosted in the presence of Deputy Premier Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa an iftar banquet at Bahrain National Theatre in honor of the Board of Trustees Chairman of Egypt's Children's Cancer Hospital, which won the third edition of the award, Dr. Amr Azad Salama, his accompanying delegation, members of the award, Board of Trustees and the jury. The iftar banquet was attended by Egyptian Ambassador to Bahrain, Soha Brahim Rafat Al Far. The Deputy Premier, head of the Ministerial Committee for Financial Affairs and the Rationalization of Spending, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, patronized the ceremony of the Health Insurance Review and Assessment Services HERA in celebration of the start of the project, which is implemented for the Supreme Council of Health in regards to the information systems related to the health insurance system. The Deputy Premier stated that adapting IT systems to serve health, clinical, administrative, and financial health insurance is only a step towards implementing the project in line with best practices. He also asserted that in line with the leadership's directives, the National Health Plan 2016 to 2025, which is considered one of the important national initiatives, aims to build a health system based on quality and sustainability. During the ceremony, a President of the Supreme Council of Health, Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, delivered a speech in which he stressed that the health information system is the back backbone of the health insurance program. For his part, uh, South Korean National Assembly Health and Social Affairs Steering Committee Chairman Sang Chu Jang expressed a pleasure in Hira's execution of the project in partnership with the Supreme Council of Health in Bahrain to provide high-quality medical services for all. He also expressed hope for the project to strengthen bilateral relations between Bahrain and Korea. The president of the Health Insurance Review and Assessment uh, Son myung si that Hira has took it upon itself to understand Bahrain's culture on the social and health structures. He also asserted the implementation of their wide range of expertise that it spans for more than 40 years in the healthcare field in South Korea in order to design effective health information managed by the best electronic system with the least possible effort errors. The Deputy Prime Minister, His Excellency Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, patronized the inauguration ceremony of the Sahati IT project on Sunday evening, a collaborative venture between the government of Bahrain and the government of South Korea to set up the information system infrastructure for the proposed social health insurance system known as Sahati in Bahrain. One important uh, element in Sahati is the IT, and the IT, which we are actually we have an agreement between uh, Bahrain, uh, SCH, and Hira in uh, Korea actually to establish a very sophisticated kind of system of IT which is going to be the main pillar for the uh, ISAHA. Actually it depends, it uh, actually is formed of four uh, components. One of them is the uh, National Electronic Medical Record which we are going to do it with the little bit of help of the Koreans and then the National Health Information uh, System, Insurance Information System which actually all the financial uh, transactions are going to be through it and that's actually controlling all the financial aspects uh, on, on health in Bahrain. The venture will lay the groundwork to establish a unified and integrated health system in the kingdom that will connect all public and private health providers. It will also set the framework for the management of insurance claims. We 
are, as Bahrain and Korean government, love to work together to uh, achieve universal health coverage for people of Bahrain as well as the citizens of Korea because the government would like to provide a good health care service with affordable price and uh, anytime, anywhere. This is what goal we would like to achieve and we will use IT system that will effectively, efficiently employed throughout the system. Uh, actually, uh, we've signed in March uh, 2017 with the Korean government to implement uh, a health information system actually on a national scale. Mainly will be concerned with uh, claims management and drug management, plus will be a reporting system which will give the uh, executive management of Bahrain, enabling them to take decisions uh, based on information and knowledge. A high-level Korean delegation is in Bahrain to kickstart the implementation of the MOU signed in Seoul in March to develop the Sahati IT system. Officials believe this visit is a gateway for further cooperation in the field of health and others in the wider region. Tonight, Bahrain inaugurates a key pillar towards achieving national social health insurance, a unified health information system that will work for accountable, sustainable and high-quality health care. Mohamed Shaban, Bahrain International News. Meanwhile, fighting continued today in Yemen's ties between Iran-allied Houthi terrorist militias and the popular resistance fighters, a collection of militias supporting the internationally recognized government. Popular resistance fighters were able to advance and control large parts of El Tashrifat military camp and the Republican place where much of the fighting was concentrated. Houthis are holding positions on mountainous hills overlooking the camp and the palace from where a shoot and shell to try to stop resistance fighters from advancing further. Government troops reported they killed 20 Houthi rebels during a prolonged attack on Taiz last night while also reporting four casualties. The pro-government Syrian Central Military Media SCMM released video today showing what it claimed are Syrian army airstrikes on alleged ISIL militant posts in the desert area of central Syria. Helicopters fired missiles while rocket launchers and tanks shelled ISIL targets. The Syrian news agency Sana reported that the army was able to gain control of an area of 1,400 square kilometers following raids over the last 24 hours targeting terror terrorists in eastern Palmyra. In the, southern, in the south, meanwhile, government forces uh, pounded parts of Dara city with airstrikes and artillery fire one day after rebels attacked the government bastions there. Iraq's uh, parliament parliamentarians known as popular mobilization have captured the town of Baj from ISIL terrorists, further shrinking the northern region under insurgent control as part of a U.S.-backed campaign to retake the city of Mosul. Eight months into the Mosul offensive, ISIL militants have been dislodged from all of the city expect, except an enclave along the western bank of the Tigris River. The group's grip on the Iraqi side of the northern region along with the border with Syria, a desert area where Iraqi and U.S. sources believe leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is hiding has been abiding as forces fighting on the side of Iraq's government advanced. Seven illegal migrants were found dead in a refrigerated truck in Libya, which was left abandoned on the shores of Karabuli town, around 65 kilometers east of Tripoli. Libyan authorities found the truck with 34 African migrants held inside, seven of whom appeared to have died of suffocation. According to the migrants, the smugglers packed them into the back of the truck to transport them to a boat, which they would use to cross the Mediterranean. The migrants said the truck driver left the vehicle on the side of the road after unknown gunmen began firing at the tires. They were locked inside the truck for two days before officers found them early Sunday morning. And the Muslim Americans are marking Ramadan gathering in homes and other places to celebrate in groups, large and small. But it is also a time of deep reflection and one of the best known U.S. humanitarian groups held an iftar this week, which was a fundraiser to benefit its causes around the world. Marty Johnson reports from Washington. 
Muslim Americans from Maryland, Washington, Virginia, and other surrounding states streaming into the sold-out Grand Iftar of Islamic Relief USA, an organization devoted to serving humanity by offering something as simple as water, described by one of the evening speakers, Linda Sarsour. They taught me that Islam is not about puffing out my chest and saying, hello everybody, I'm a Muslim today and I'm here to help you, that my act in of itself was enough for people to know the true beauty, compassion and love and justice of the beautiful religion that we follow. IRUSA sends workers, supplies and money to some of the poorest places in the world and for the past five years has been helping refugees from Syria and other troubled spots. Well, helping the Syrian refugees and other refugees across the world, we're helping them with uh, refugee resettlement programs, helping them get housing, helping them with medical supplies, materials that they need. And also a couple of our really great projects are educational and psychosocial, where we're helping young children acclimate after their uh, stress disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder from the war and the conflict. Delivering clean water. The UN reports five million Syrians have fled their home country, joining millions of other refugees from the Mideast, Africa and Asia in temporary housing and slowly being resettled elsewhere including small numbers in the USA. IRUSA is known as one of the best organized Muslim humanitarian groups in the United States. And this grand iftar held every year here in the Washington, D.C. area is a perfect example of that. It is one of the biggest iftars held in the U.S. every year. The grand iftar featured speakers along with the dates, tea, and of course, prayers. 1,200 seats sold out to donors like Soroya Thura, whose parents are from Myanmar. I know how good they are in terms of helping countries all across the world, all Muslim countries and countries where people are suffering. And I think that that's just a beautiful mission. So I felt that it would be really important to bring my family here and come and support that mission um, in terms of the global um, relief and the things that they do to help people all around the country. Sarah Cosmi brought her two children, one of whom is performing. One of the reasons I'm here is because my daughter is going to be performing at the chorus here with the Adam's Beat. Um, and Islamic Relief is a very good cause. Rushing around, seeing to guests most of the evening, Abad Farshuri, who volunteers annually. Really, I, I mean, I knew that you'd expect like some, you know, diver diversity here and there, but I was kind of really taken back by the amount of people that show up and actually come back year after year. You know, it's like, I was like, okay, there is just one big event and then, all right, is that it? Like, can they actually keep this much, you know, um, attention of the amount of people that come every year? Can they keep it up? And, you know, they definitely have. Alhamdulillah, last year we had the money raised by IRUSA stands as a testament of their community going forward to relieve suffering wherever it's found. Reporting for Bahrain TV, I'm Marty Johnson. Washington.